gratitude and thankfulness. Gratitude and thankfulness? <laughs> so Terry, your Thanksgiving was how long ago was it? Um the second the second Monday in October. So what about five second weeks ago? Monday. Yeah. 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 Wow. And did you do anything special for that day? Um, actually, we did. We did a couple. Uh, we did a because it falls. It always falls on a Monday for us. Uh, we actually did a, a family get together on Saturday night because some people were traveling and stuff. So uh, we had a wonderful dinner with all of the turkey and fixings and everything else. And uh, there was probably about fifteen of us. I think 15, 16 of us. Why do you guys eat turkey on Thanksgiving? Well, because it's tradition. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I always had. I always had turkey because we, growing up as a kid, and into my adult years, we raised turkey. So I always had turkey. <laughs> so any occasion we'd have turkey. Do you guys have the same type of? Oh, we landed in Canada, and the Native Americans helped us. <laughs> Like I don't know, these like made up stories I, about. I, 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 you know what? I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not positive, but I think that Thanksgiving was taken more from a a church standpoint, more from a religious standpoint, as for that it was a harvest time, and so um, you know the end, the middle of October, the second week in October. Here in Canada, most of the harvest is off. The, the crops are are finished, so it was a time to, uh, you know, like to give thanks and uh, you know the bounty of the earth uh, for the season. And um, there was a lot of religious connotations to it. You know, the church services would always do something special for you know a Thanksgiving service and stuff. So that was the tradition where I, you know. From my tradition. Wow. Huh. Okay. So it, was more, it was more of a. It was you know more based on faith and thankfulness for the bounty of the earth. Okay. Well, gee, now I feel like I have to go look this up. Like, what countries in the world celebrate Thanksgiving, and why do they celebrate it, and when? You guys are so different. So this weekend, I was able to. I was invited to some people I met. Um, they had a dinner. It was people I met at the Journey to the Truth conference that lived in Florida. So our little group got together and had a pre-Thanksgiving on Sunday, and it was amazing. I made my um, buttermilk pie and green bean casserole, and then I quickly realized we can't eat that stuff anymore because <laughs> it's like way too sweet and too rich and we're just not even really used to that anymore so but it was really cool to be able to be invited to a thanksgiving dinner post 2020 and just post divorcee because I, I would tell people once you get divorced people stop inviting you for thanksgiving because i think it's contagious maybe I don't know. <laughs> That's my bad joke, y'all. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to share the screen so that we can see. This is what Terry did some research on, the difference between gratitude and thankfulness. And this is something I did not know. Let's see. Is it share? There we go. Can you see it very good? Mm -hmm. Or do you want me to read it? Or you read it? Oh, I, I can read it. So gratitude and thankful um, are often used interchangeably. Whoa. <laughs> what happened? You, uh, on I don't know what happened. Hold on a second. Okay. It just decided it didn't like me that much. Hmm. Maybe we're not grateful enough for it. Right? No, it's like, I'm going to show you grateful. You better be mm -hmm. grateful that this is up on the screen. Mom's like, <laughs> <laughs> 
So grateful and thankful are often used interchangeably, but there is a subtle difference between them. Wait a minute. Is that you just making stuff up now or is it on here? It's on the screen. Okay. Oh, I see what's happening. It's me. Mm. Whoa. Oh, that's cool. Endless gratitude. Okay, so I'm going to change the screen now to show. All right. All right. There. So grateful is defined as being appreciative of benefits received. It is considered a feeling of appreciation towards something. Thankful is, defined, is defined as being conscious of benefits received and also well pleased. Okay, what did you get out of that, Terry? Well, I started this, I started um, doing the research in it. Well, I shouldn't say it started it's it's been something you know we use the word grateful and uh, you know and we have gratitude and we're thankful but it's like then it became the idea of like well what's the difference in it and it became a real um contemplation really how how we think about things and you know we can be thankful that uh uh, you know, we got home without, um, you know, <laughs> within w without having a lot of traffic to fight with. We can be thankful about it. But we can be really grateful and appreciate that I got home, you know, like I got home without having any incident on the um, on the highway, without having, you know, being delayed. And I'm grateful to be here, you know, at this time. So it's more of a feeling within ourselves when you're grateful. Thankful is just, yeah, I'm happy that this was happened or that happened, but we don't give it much thought, you know, like, you know, you say, thank you for passing me this or that, but gratitude is more about feeling it and sitting with it and being in that space of like allowing it that flow to move through us and being grateful for the experience. Thankfulness can sometimes be just um, a gesture more than anything else. Uh, that's mm. not um, It is a sense of feeling of thankfulness or, or relief towards an ungrateful event that hasn't occurred. Gratitude is a more complex concept than being thankful. Gratitude is being thankful in an attitude of appreciation. Thankfulness is a short-lived response to a temporary event, and it usually and, it, and it's usually expressed by saying thank you to someone. I guess it makes sense, because you know, when you say thankful versus, or thank you versus, I am so grateful for your presence or your friendship um, a lot of times, I'm, I'm sure you do this uh, gratitude exercises mm -hmm. where you, I mean, it, it, it gets me emotional. Exactly. We're thank I think being thankful doesn't hold the same emotion, I don't think, for people. Um, maybe they, they, they may use the words interchangeably, but I think if they sit and contemplate, they will feel a difference. I call upon the God power within me to receive this food and its energy for the nourishment of my spiritual essence, as well as my physical body. Let the spiritual value and the physical value of this food I'm about to eat nourish both soul and body. I did not mean for you to read that, but but that's kind of what um, it, even at dinner the other day. That's something Emery was uh, sharing 
about her prayers. That's that's this is actually what's hung up in my kitchen, mm-hmm. so that we could um, do that. You know, calling gratitude for our food because a lot of times we don't know what to eat. Like a lot of us want to are vegan or veg you know, vegetarian, prescatarian, we're worried about meat, we're worried about, you know, what what you should eat, and oh, you know, this farm, there's slaves on the farm, or people, the animals are mistreated, and and we want to do whatever we can to try to do the right thing, but it's it's unescapable because it's like falling out of a tree and hitting every branch on the way down. It's inevitable that there's some type of mismanagement, mistreatment or suffering involved in getting the food that we eat. You know, there's some type of sanitary issues and things like that. Um, And the last one, by the power of the supply of the universal mind and spirit, I have received this food. May it preserve the body which contains the source from which it came, the source. Uh, The universal presence of God supplies me with nourishment to the body, mind, and spirit. I am led by infinite intelligence to nourish my mind, body, and spirit with the proper nourishment for this, I give thanks. So we we had this prayer before the food or call in this energy before food because I think we forget our power to transmute anything. And so it's just important that we get to the point where we do realize like you have the power to shape the food, the energy, the relationships that you have, even Thanksgiving dinner could be besides the food, it's the company. A lot of people struggle with the company that they're keeping, but it's the mindset that you have. Now, if you, you're going into it with the mindset that you can transmute the energy of this room and now be grateful for these relationships, even though it people may be causing you harm or seeming to disturb you in some way, agitate you in some way, or cause you some type of suffering, you can be grateful that there is some type of lesson in it and and transmute it. And sometimes I notice people saying, well, nobody likes me and I'm never having fun and I don't have any friends. And But you could even transmute that situation in your thinking that, Well, I'm grateful that I don't attract people who are disingenuine or I don't attract people that are fake and waste my time. So there's always like a different way that you can see things, but then you can also just take control and begin to transmute that situation even further Um, and call in. I ask, you know, by the power of the God mind inside me, I create conversations that are intelligent and I attract people that genuinely have my best interests in mind and that are like-minded. And so don't focus on the pain point, but continue with the, the transmutation. We can call in this transmutation on our food, on our relationships, and we can work in without dabbling with trying to control someone else's energy, we can just call in to attract the things that we want. And we can be grateful that we're in the place that we are in right now at the same time. And I, and I was just going to say, and we can do that with a sense of gratitude, you know, as we're doing, as we're doing that, you know, feeling, what is that feeling what does gratitude mean do we say we open ourselves up and we there's a certain feeling when we're feeling grateful for something how does it make you feel you know and and maybe maybe one of the exercises is like you know we can use words but if we didn't have words what was what are the feelings how does it how does it it feel do you feel it in your heart do you feel it in your 
in your solar plexus. Just, you know, like sit for a moment, just, just close your eyes right now and just feel grateful, feel grateful that you are here in this moment and you've got everything else going on around you. But this moment is a time when you can be present and just feel grateful. And how does grateful feel? What does that feel like within you? Is there, is there a sense of release? Is there a sense of ease? Is there a tension? But, you know, generally when we feel grateful, we're allowing, um, you know, some people would call it the Holy Spirit, but we're allowing that aspect of creation to just sit upon us. And it's a time that we can be, that we can release some of the stresses in our life because we're being grateful for the time that, or for the moment, for the experience that we're we're having and just be grateful right now for this experience and notice how it feels within you and just how it can just release some of the stress that you feel. Um, great, grat gratitude and gratefulness is about um, being quiet, finding that still moment and just um, accepting and appreciating what we have at the time right and so when you're grateful so at the end of prayers we usually say well for for us thank you as if it is already done so being grateful for the thing as if and accepting it as if it's already done. And you're anchoring in, in this feeling of gratitude uh, um, while you're doing this, as if you've already received it, increases the power of the transmutation of this thing that you're trying to do. There's even so be it, which I just learned it. So be it, like we say, so be it, so be it, so be it, that when you say this three times, it's past, present, and future. Like you don't have to say, so might it be, so mo and so it is done. It, it covers that. It's saying the past and the present and then the future, that these three tenses. And so it just magnifies um, the solidity of what you just asked for. Mm -hmm. So increase it. Accept the things that are, ask for the things that you want so that you can transmute and increase your levels of joy and gratitude in your life. And then um, the words that we say are powerful in this transmutation to actually bless our food, bless our relationship, bless our lives, increase the abundance in our lives. So with that being said, we'll allow you to pull some cards. Well. Guess what book I'm going to pull from? The Gratitude oh, yeah, the Oracle. Gratitude Oracle. Is this? So, so with this time coming, and, you know, I, I think part of the problem that we all face is expectations. And so um, if we can release the expectations, um, you know, like, especially we, because this is a time we're coming to that time of year with our family. <laughs> and, you know, everybody's got expectations upon us and we on them and releasing those expectations and just being grateful uh, and showing the gratitude that we have just within ourselves. We don't have, we can share it with other people, but within, you know, what is just say, yeah, I've got these challenging relationships, but I am grateful that I, I do have these people in my life, even though they you know can what? be. They you know they're what? There, they're here. We've chosen them. You are so all in my brain because after we had this, this dinner, and it's nothing happened. Um, that that, but what I was processing is the fact that. Um, as people are transitioning and going through this ascension process, they feel like they're losing family members. So whenever we go to an event or a conference or gather in any way, I notice that people want to recreate the family structure. 
a long time ago, I realized like, okay, if your mother is the mothership, you're, you come through the mothership, she has a job, but we have um, been taught this level of attachment to the idea of this is my mother when we claim possession over people as, but this is what also creates our disappointment because we have expectations to the role of what the mother has, right? Or what my brother should be like and what my and how my father should behave. And so our disappointment and pain comes from expectation of these people to act a certain way and be a certain way and give us these things that we feel we need instead of going within. And so here we are, we go to meet new people and try to fill these roles and recreate this structure that wasn't working in our home life. And now we meet new people. And now we meet Jim and Jim is my friend and he's like a brother to me. And now I can be angry at him because later he doesn't fulfill the role that I expected. And he doesn't um, respond the way that I want it. He doesn't think the same way as me. He doesn't agree with me all the time. And so now these expectations lead to what another broken relationship when we kind of have to change the way that we view ourselves and our relationships with others by having a certain level of detachment. I don't have to attach to all of Terry's beliefs and I don't have to have expectations of how she should respond. And maybe Terry might say no to me when I feel she should say yes, but I need to detach from certain things. And then maybe these expectations, uh, you know, can roll right off because I think we really need to change the way that we see things. And this was on my mind for like the last day or so I was writing about it. So, and then you just brought it, brought it up. It's so funny. Yeah. And, and so maybe what we have to do is learn to be grateful for the person that's there in front of us, not based on our expectations, but just appreciate who they are because they come to the table with their own challenges, just like we do. And we have, we're each navigating based on, you know, based on what we're able to understand. And we, you know, some of us are, have awakened a little bit more than someone else. You know, we got up at seven o'clock instead of eight o'clock, right? We've already had our first cup of coffee. They're just waking up. So we can't be, we can't be, uh, you know, judging from a place when we, you know, when, where, where, where were we, you know, a while back? Like, so, so these people can't, and they can't expect us to fill their needs. And so we have to, instead of like cutting them off, is just sort of step away graciously, appreciate where they are. And, you know, if we have to, you know, like not um, be connected with them in the same way, we can set them free without having um, any animosity towards them. And, and it's, you know, we've done this before this exercise where we pull back our energy send back their energy to them. And so then that way they can be in their bubble and I can be in my bubble. And if our bubbles come together, then we don't have to, we don't have to um, exchange this energy in the same way that we used to. Right. So we can be grateful right. for who we are and their, and their journey. This causes a lot of discord because um we we uh, I'm seeing friend groups where there's just a lot of built up expectations of others instead of respect and observation. We're really uh, so deep into the programming. A lot of people think, oh, I've, I've made it and there is no making it. The programming that we have is so deep that we have to literally be mindful and self-aware of me, not me, because if you say even marriage, which I'm not like against marriage, but there's a community in China where the women get to choose, right? They never marry. There's not a word for father. So we judge our existence or our, um, our expectations of life solely on what we've been taught from the beginning. 
if a baby is Chinese and is born in India, that baby is going to speak the language of India. It's not going to speak Chinese. So wherever we are, that that sets our um, demographic of our expectations, traditions, and beliefs. And so we're constantly becoming more aware of our um, limiting beliefs and our religious beliefs, our, our uh, self belief and doubt and things. It's I love it though, because <laughs> my mind just reels with the possibilities and expectations. Like, huh? What is this? is this important? Is this real? Is this? And so we should always be checking for these things going inside of our little suitcase and trying to understand who we are and why we react the way we do because we don't have to feel you know a lot of our suffering is our attachment to the idea but if I let go of the idea then I no longer have to suffer because I no longer have any expectation of this like oh this is just what it's like to be on a roller coaster mm-hmm this is just what it fits, and this is what we are, right? We're on our personal yeah. roller coasters, our own uh, theme park rides, and playing our own video games. And it's your quarter; it's just play. Okay. <laughs> but I'll let so, you read your card because I can go on. <laughs> the, so the first card I got here is confide, and so um, hmm. we were just talking about how we how we talk to people. Who do we bring into our into our uh, fold and, and how do we communicate with them? Who can we confide in? And there's a certain ele element of trust that happens, you know, because, um, and we talked about this before, how we have, um, uh, you know, people want to judge us. And so we have to be in a place where we can feel confident and, com well, confident, confide, um, when we can speak with someone that we can trust. And so sometimes um, we we can confide with our higher self, with our uh, connection with the source. That That is a confidence that we can build and we can have that interchange with our higher self, with our intuition. And so sometimes we may not listen to uh, that still voice <laughs> In, a, in the back of our head, but that's our intuition. That's our higher self giving us direction. And so we can confide in that and, and listen and just say, okay, how do I deal with a situation? How do I go forward? What's the best thing for me to eat? You know, what's the best thing for me to wear and listen, you know, confide in our, not only that, how do we feel about things and listen to what, you're given back to that, you know, those questions, those queries, you know, we are too busy yakking without listening. And so maybe when we confide, we, I mean, you can confide in a friend. I confide in Erica all the time, right? But, but these are, this is, this is a, a, an aspect of being able to trust and, and, you know, finding that that element of trust within us and you know showing gratitude and then the next one is being kind-hearted and wow <laughs> kind-heartedness is is you know and and sometimes we may be used as a as a confidant people will talk to us are we judging things or are we kind-hearted and allowing them to express themselves so coming from a space of an open heart is going to allow um, confidence to build, right? When when you're in that space of your heart, then you're then you are letting down the shields, and you're not in a um, aggressive position. You're more in that receptive position, and you know, like that's what gratitude is: is being receptive of things, being an open heart, having a kind heart. You know, we're not we're not in a defensive mode. We're in an accepting mode. And the um, overall card that we get is it's a culmination. So this is bringing together, um, you know, like all of those aspects of 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 um, things that will culminate. And that's how we progress through and transmute information and 
So we have to look at it as as a um, as a process, as you know, when we can confide in someone else in, within ourselves and with an open heart, then it will culminate in our able to transmute the energies in a way. That's absolutely amazing. So the first card was confide, and the yeah. second card was kind hearted. Kind hearted. Yeah, and culmination. I'll 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 go to these and put them on. So right that there. sounds like a, a, a recipe for good friendships and good relationships to mm -hmm. be able to confide in 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 someone and be kind hearted, maybe in your responses and being less judgmental, not having expectations, observing that person and respecting their sovereignty. Um, we were talking the other day about a, um, a firm yes, or like a truly felt yes versus someone who says yes, but they don't really wanna do something but because we need to actually allow each other to say yes and say no and not be attached to the result of the answer and take it out on people and make them feel guilty and bully them into doing things that we want from them. And that's a part of friendship, you know, or tr truly uh, respecting one another without expectations. And I was gonna say without externalizing all your joy based on what other people think, feel, and how they respond mm -hmm. to you. You have to have this uh, for yourself. And that was, just, those cards are amazing, so. Yeah, and, and I think um, the thing is, is when somebody confides in us, they are opening themselves up, right? If we accept that with a kind heart, and realize that they're making themselves vulnerable. When they confide in us, they are reaching out, right? And so we, in turn, can be gracious to them, and we can receive their their, their confidence, their, their trust, the trust that they've created with us, and we we can now allow that whatever it is that they're wanting to share and then it'll culminate in in two things it will be for them they'll be able to have that support that they require and it also gives us that sense of being of giving so so we're we can be gracious in in allowing ourselves to be kind-hearted and then in turn they are gra they're grateful because we've assisted them in that time so it becomes you know it becomes this moment this movement that's wonderful well we'll move on to these readings individual readings for the group and thanks for checking us out for everybody who's celebrating uh, this week their harvest and any type of fall um celebration of gratitude or a birthday, anything you got going on this week. Um, we just want to send thanks for participating with us, hanging out with us, watching us, sending us love and joy. And um, we're just grateful for your participation in any way.